Well, in this lesson, we're going to learn about multiplying a polynomial to another polynomial. We left off last time with distributing a monomial to binomials or trinomials or any number of nomials. Um, so the only thing that's different about multiplying a polynomial to another polynomial is we do have to be careful to make sure each term goes to each term. So this could be kind of visualized in a two by two grid like this right here. So when we distributed a single term, we made sure that the 2x went to both the 4x and the negative 8. When I have something like this, I have to make sure that the 5x goes to the 4x, the 5x goes to the 2, the 8 goes to the 4x, and the 8 goes to the 2. So we end up with four separate terms, four separate multiplications. So just to kind of visual, you don't necessarily work them out this way, but just to visualize the 5x to the 4x gave us 20, and then the x times x made x squared. The 5x times the 2 would be 5 times 2 is 10, and that x, of course, would still be there. The 8 times the 4x would be... And then 8 times 4 is 32. Yeah, okay. 32x. And then last, of course, the 8 times 2 would be 16. Okay, now what do we do with these terms? In this case, they are all positive. So if I wrote them all out, I wouldn't necessarily, again, have used this chart. As long as I was careful to be organized, I would have ended up with these four separate terms. They were all positive. And then I would, uh, as my last step, look through and see if any like terms might have been able to be combined. So just like we had in this example right here, wait, this example right here, we see some like terms. Oops, lost it. There we go. <laughs> These two right here both have a single x. He is an x squared, which no one else has. He's a constant, which no one else is. So I combine these two middle terms, positive 10 and positive 32, will make 42. So my final fully simplified answer would be 20x squared plus 42, because 10 plus 32 is 42, plus 16. So just a kind of reminder, if I had a special case like this right here, we're going to see something funny happen. So we're going to look through this one right here, the numbers, so we can compare what happens in a case like that to a case like this. So first off, let's foil these out. Now, you'll hear me use the word foil, um, and there's actually like a little bit of a controversy, some drama here with foil. Some math teachers are like very against it and some like me don't really care. It's just kind of an acronym to help you remember first, outer, inner, last. So first being the first term and the first term, outer being kind of like the outside. So that was the five X and the two, the inner, which is the eight and the four. And then the last was the eight and the two. The thing that people don't like about it, some math teachers, is that technically it only works for a binomial times a binomial. So as soon as you throw in an extra term like this problem here, FOIL doesn't work. But it's usually kind of used as a verb to imply the multiplication of polynomials like that, um, that really only works in a very specific case. So even though the acronym FOIL doesn't work, the idea, the fact that there's not just a first and a last can kind of help you remember that you do need to make sure to get all of those guys to all of those guys. So let's try it with these. Now this one, notice that the letters are in the back, which we're not as used to. So just be extra careful. So I go five times four is 20. And I go five times two T is a positive 10 t. And then I have the negative 3t, watching those signs. Remember, the sign always belongs to the number behind it, which makes this a negative 12t, negative times positive. And last, negative 3t times positive 2t, negative times positive is negative, 6. And then careful, this one, they both had a t. t times t is t squared. And just like the blue one here, I'm going to go through and combine like terms. There's no other constants. There's no other t squareds. But right here, positive 10 minus 12 is negative 2t. This is my final reduced answer. 
Some of you guys out of habit may go back in and rewrite your answer like this. The only thing is be careful if you do this, that you do keep this as a negative six. So it would be very tempting to accidentally rewrite it as just a positive six because we're used to that front guy being a positive. Okay, so both of these answers are acceptable as long as you do remember that that sign belongs to the number behind it. Common mistake. Okay, this one here. I go 2a times 2a. That makes 4a squared. I'm not going to switch the colors anymore. I'm just going to ask that you try to follow along. 2a times negative 3b is negative 6. There's an a and a b. Then I have the positive b, 3b times the positive 2a. 3 times 2 again is 6. And here I could write BA, but you know, since we have the commutative property where the order is not important, I'm going to write them in alphabetical order again of AB. This also helps me spot my light terms. If I wrote one is BA and one is AB, I might have thought they were different terms, but they both had one A and one B. Last, I have positive 3B times negative 3B. Positive times negative is negative. 3 times 3 is 9. B times B is B squared. Now I'm going to look for my like terms. There's no other a squareds. There's no other b squareds. But right here I have minus 6ab plus 6ab. So be careful, I don't write ab. That would imply there's one of them. Minus 6 plus 6 is 0. They've completely canceled. So the final answer is only 4a squared minus 9b squared. This is actually a special case. He gets the special fancy name of conjugate. It happens when we have matching front number guys, 2a, 2a, matching back number guys, 3b, 3b, but opposite signs in the middle. Because it always works out that you end up with the same numbers like we did here, but one is a plus and one is a minus. So in these special cases that are called conjugates, we always end up with an answer like this with two terms. But that's the only way that that can happen is with these conjugates where the stuff canceled because they matched with opposite signs. So I make a, a big deal about that because this right here has a very, very common mistake. A lot of people get in a hurry and they write an answer of 25x squared plus 4y squared, and that is not true. And every time you do that, you make that mistake, a puppy dies. So don't be doing that. So right here, this implies that there is two of everything inside of these parentheses. Remember those rules. So that means this is really 5x plus 2y times another 5x plus 2y. It means it needs to be foiled, okay? You cannot take that shortcut. Remember the puppies. So what seemed like should have been a really quick, easy problem actually did need the foil. So I go first times first, which is 25x squared. Outer times outer it gives me a 10x and a y. Inner times inner. Gives me another 10. I could write yx, but I like alphabetical order. And then last times last, 2 times 2 is 4. y times y is y squared. And when I'm combining this, notice, unlike the last one we just did, these are not plus minus. These are exactly the same. So this is going to give me not a cancellation, but 20xys. Okay. Again, it is not x squared, y squared. I was not multiplying them. I was just combining. This had x, y, and this had x, y. So I combined 10 plus 10 to make 20 of them. So every single time, no matter what the sign, no matter what the letters, no matter what the numbers, every single time that you have a binomial squared, like this right here, two terms squared, raised to the power of two, you will always, always, always end up with three terms. Always. It will never ever cancel because the only way to make it cancel is with the conjugates where you have a plus and a minus. If you're squaring it, they will always have the same sign, which means they will either both be positives or both be negatives. And remember, negative and negative would make a minus 20. It would not cancel. So I point this out because this is a super duper common mistake. So a binomial squared will always, always have three terms in its final answer. Okay, never two. Watch out for the puppies. 
All right, so here again, we don't technically have the foil, but we've got this. Just remember everyone to everyone. So follow me here. I'm gonna take this X times the first, second, and third term. And I'm gonna take this negative three Y times the first, second, and third term. Okay, so here we go. X times X squared is X cubed. X times three XY is three. Now I have two x's because this one and this one and one y. Okay. X times nine y squared gives me nine with one x and the two y's. Okay. This was x to each one of those three. Now I'm going to take the negative three y. So notice after I've done all this, I should have six terms, three from the first multiplications and three from the second. Watch those signs because I am distributing a negative. Negative 3y times x would be minus 3. Okay, again, I like alphabetical order, so I'm going to put those two x's in front and the single y in back. Negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. I have one x, he had one y, and he had one y, so I have two y's. Negative times positive is negative. 3 times 9 is 27. One y and two more y's makes three y's. So I should check right here. One, two, three, four, five, six terms. Okay, make sure I got everybody to everybody. Now I go through and combine my like terms. Here's an x cubed. No other x cubes. Okay, be very careful right here. I have a term where I have two x's and one y. Okay, he has one x and two y's. He has two x's and one y. Positive three and negative three, they cancel each other out. Next, I look for a term with one x and two y's. Here he is. Oh, nine minus nine, they cancel each other out. And then last, there was a single minus 27 y cubed. Now this is a special case for the difference of cubes, but don't worry, we don't really get into that much. It also follows a special pattern. If you've heard the SOAP acronym before, um, it's this right here. So this is a special case for the difference of cubes. Okay, this was squares. Remember, uh, binomial squared always has three terms. So the only way that you can make two terms cancel each other out is with that plus and minus. Okay, so this is something that just takes a little bit of practice. It's one of those things that's really easy to miss a sign or you know, accidentally think that this was a T squared, stuff like that. Um, so just try not to get frustrated with yourself and just take your time and really watch each individual step. In my next video, you'll notice that um, I originally had it in a different position. So there will be, I'll talk about, um, I do this in a later section, which is actually this section that we just talked about. So when I say that, just know that it's not the case anymore. You've now seen that video. Um, so just a quick heads up, I talk about the radical I and we go through these same steps of multiplying and dividing that we've learned in these previous lessons. Okay, sorry about that mistake. Hope everything is clear. And if it is not, just ask me questions.